here is the first cave. Now, there are always traps in these. Just easy experience just to get rid of them. First cave. And there's always a duffel bag, so a little serve survivor cash. It's got some good shit in there. And here is the first terminal entry. We'll begin. October 28th, five days on foot, still can't sleep. Outside it's like nothing happened. Sky looks wrong, but that's all. Hike back to overturned Nat Gar truck near Tugerville. After Blister's heel, maybe. Looks like USGS team was researching something in this cave. Cleared out when the bombs fell, left equipment behind. Probably thought they had families to run back to. October 29th. Sure, must have said this out loud a thousand times walking here. Maybe writing it will feel more like you heard. You were right. I was north of the Spanish Fork. Took the 77 along at Provo Bay to steer clear of the town. Would have been home in an hour. Engine died. Truck just stopped. So did a Chrysler in the other lane. You were right away. Okay, first nuke hit Salt Lake City inside a minute. I was looking south, lucky man. Flash behind me so bright the world looked like it was on fire. Old couple from the Chrysler started screaming, they can't see. I didn't watch you die, sure. Saved my eyes, counted twelve, more flashes. Next seven minutes. Ground shook each time, eighteen seconds later. When nothing hit for half an hour, I took a look and the globe was on fire where you and Alex died. Didn't kid myself. Didn't know what to do, so I grabbed my pack and my rifle. I saw to the old couple, sat them up against each other, let them hold each other and comfort each other. Told them I was going to get help. Everything would be okay. One bullet through both heads, instant. Five day hike, back to Zion. You told me, stop running off to the wild man belongs with his family. You were right. You were right. You were right. You were right. Wasn't there to hold you and my boy. Died without me. Never touch you or him again. Should shoot myself. What I deserve. Can. Maybe soon. October 31st. Black rain falling outside. Geiger jumping. Should let it kill me, but bawling war from the back of the cave all the same. November 2nd. Sounds dead outside. We can't look. Geiger goes lethal 15 feet from the cave mouth. Do the math. Radiation goes down before water runs out. Or I never leave this cave. Year 2078. January 1st. Happy New Year. Two months in the cave. Still lethal outside. Don't get it. In the army, they said two to four weeks. Clear fallout. Less than a month's war left. In mop and condensation of cave walls ringing. Shirts and balls. Trading calories for H2O. Food stocks holding. Thanks, USGS. If there was a, even a chance, I'd see you two again. I'd run outside. January 10th. It sounded like windstorms out there for two days. Radiation gone down 500. What happened? January 15th. Took a peek. Snow. It looks green. January 28th. Radiation low enough I could risk shore exposure outside. More important. Cave stream now drinkable. If I use rad drugs. January 30th. There's nothing alive out there. Year 2083, May 5th, the comeback goes on. Add prickly player and a list of survivors with honey mesquite, banana yucca, odd modules, mutations, but safety. Harvesting also careful, never take more than a fifth. Mouth words every time I'm about to eat something that isn't from a can. May 7th, clouds of those stinging flies near fallen tree I called out the napper. Little flashes in the cloud. Something dragonfly sized. That zaps the midair. Scoops them up. Something new. May 19th. 
Bighorn sheep. A family. Ram. And you. And a little one. Fucking goddammit. May 20th. The sheep were different. Brawny. You had curved horns, just like the ram. I've seen some tiny lizards, but this is the first time I've seen animals that big. Fingers crossed. Five to ten years breeding. Fresh meat, hides, horns. I know it's time to go back, sure. When winter has passed. 2084. June 14th. Just got back. Tired. Good scrounging along the way. Ended up dragging back a cart of stuff. Right tomorrow. Sleep. June 15th. The part April 10th. Walked to Salt Lake City. Took 15 days. Would have been 7 to 9. Back in the old days, but... Had to circle pockets of radiation. Forge along the way. Don't know why I was thinking. Imagine I'd find my house. Dig to the rubble. Find something. Your bones, I hoped. The little nuts. Where they buried them. Here in Zion, maybe. Salt Lake City is mostly craters. Warped steel girders where high rises sat. Woods of bricks. Never found our house. Didn't even find a street. It wasn't a crater, but scorched clean. I want to believe it was fast. A flash. Both of you vaporized. Lies to make me feel better. I'll never know. Which part of the city was hit first? Northeast, you both would have died in a blink. The further away, you burned alive, screaming. Or the last broken glass, bits of brick, wood splinters shredding you like hamburger. Look at it, coward. And listen. Don't turn away your face it. If you'd been brave, lucky man, you'd have found a spot and blown your brains out. But not you. You took your own time walking back. Made a shopping trip of it. Scrounger. The truck was still there, on the 77 north of the Spanish Fork. Priceless too. But no sign of the old couple's bones. Outside in the fi, I caught a trail of three men, tracks heading toward Fountain Green. Thought about following it, but didn't. Stupid fantasy of friends. More likely cannibals. June 20th. Took two days to build a door and electricity to it. No soliciting assholes. Home sweet fucking home. September 20th. I count 28 of them. 11 males, 8 females, 9 children aged 2 to 10. Some rifles and pistols in bad repair. Old world clothes. Ratty. September 22nd. Got close enough last night to hear them talk Spanish. I think from Mexico. I heard them say Paradiso. I think that means paradise. Here to stay then. They seem harmless. They seem. October 5th. The one I call Maria is pregnant. I think of the father as Jose. But she spends a lot of time with Pablo too. October 7th. Pedro ran out to pee in the stream. He would have seen me if he looked to his left. Too close. I need to give them space. November 10th. Jose broke his leg, chasing a bighorn. Too far from cramp for them to hear. Told myself to leave them, but I just couldn't. 300 yards from the camp, I did my best Jose screaming invitation long, and sprung them along to the crest where they could hear the real Jose. Probably useless. Compound fracture broke the skin. November 11th. Infection. So many goddamn words. Nearly the same. I think it'd be fluent, but anyway. Jose's leg has got it. So he's going to die. Nature for you. Of course. The giving prayer a try. November 12th. Left a bottle of amp and antibiotics on a rock outside their camp last night. They thanked God. Dios. 
course. As though that asshole saw fit to burn the world, but still cared enough to leave some medicine on a rock. November 15th. Jose will always limp, but otherwise he'll be okay. Good deed for a month. Will they make it through the winter? Desert Ranger armor. Literally, the most badass shit. Who there? Randall Clark's armor. Forgive me, Mama. Shit looks so spicy. <coughs> Year 2096. February 11th. Fuckers killed all the men. I think they would have taken the woman alive, but Maria and Selena opened fire. And some of the others went for their guns. So they shot them down. Some of the kids with them. If I could have warned them. February 12th. Elena and Carmen and five children still alive. Being kept in a pen. There are more than a hundred of these assholes in blue suits. Every suit says 22 in the back. Why? Armed to the teeth with submachine guns, pistols. Estimate 60% male. Everyone seems to follow the dark haired guy. But can't get close enough to tell. Assholes are disciplined. Patrols, sentries. They mean business. I say I go in at night, get the woman and the children out. Where to next? But I have to get them out. Have to. February 13th. Recon during the night. Well organized sentries along most approaches. The stream, not covered. Are they sick? Lots of coughing fits. Tuberculosis. Woman and children still in pen. We'll try to infiltrate by stream tomorrow night. February 14th. They ate them. February 19th. Ambush along Riverside Trail. Six males killed. Heard their coughing a mile away. Used their grenades to booby trap bodies. Kept half. Secured six SMGs. 500 rounds of 10mm. Six frags. February 20th. Ambush along Riverside Trail. Two males died to chicken bodies. Killed two more with a rifle. One shot through calf. Let the asshole crawl. To spread the message. Coughed like it shot him through the lungs. February 23rd. Ambush half a mile east of the coal pits wash. Eight males killed. Part 2. February 28th. Ambush in the Narrows. Six males killed. Took a 10mm through the thigh. Steel jacket. Missed femoral. Lucky. Used tourniquet to make sure no blood splattered in the rocks back to my cave. I've set booby traps all along the entrance passage. But if they find me, it'll be only a matter of time. Still, 24 confirmed kills in 10 days. At least a third of their combat force. Not bad for an old man. March 2nd. Lucky, 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 lucky. Patrol was small, three men. Screaming woke me up. Point man caught him under a deadfall. Panic fire ricocheted into the cave. Almost hit me. Crawled forward and killed all of them with an SMG. Nearly used frags. Stupid. Finger and pen when remembering the ricochets. Leaving at once, no other patrols in the area, but they'll be searching the narrows for these three, taking as much food as I can drag with me, heading out of the cave south. Ooh, would I make me act up? Right. January 13th, the coffers are gone, finally. All 34 that still lived. Eight are dead for strength and struck out his SE. Victory. Ten months of killing. All I feel is cold. 
They deserved every goddamn bit of it. January 17th. I thought I was dreaming, but the screams are real. For a moment, I thought they tricked me. Just presented to leave Zion, then sent a patrol to check me down. But the screams were a woman's. Edged around the corner in passageway. To have a look, one vaulter, ankle deep in a bear trap. Leveled my SMG. But the way she was crying stopped me. How she screamed when she saw me. Been their boogeyman for a long time. The name's Sylvie. Claims she ran away from them, calls them evil people. Children of the devil. Turns out they were sick after all. Something they caught in a vault. She never came down with it. Yet. So help me. I've wound up being her nurse. January 18th. Her story matches what I learned from my interrogations. But according to her, let's just say, it was bad to be a woman in that group. So when they left, she slipped away. She knows next to nothing about living outside of all. Says she wants to learn. It's three years later. September 9th. Never been so scared in my life. Canada wasn't scary. Just sickening. The criminality of it. The end of the world wasn't scary. When I knew you and Alex were dead, I didn't have anything left to be scared about. I just went on for some reason. I wasn't scared fighting the volors. It was like I kept daring for them to finish me. But when I killed them, I think that was the closest I came to feeling happy in years. Sylvia's pregnant, and then I'm terrified. Ridiculous old man. A father again at 47. In this world. She's so excited, and so trusting. She says it's God's will that we have this child. Nothing can go wrong. You see, Cher, she doesn't know about you and Alex. Never told her. Almost did sometimes, but what you and I had seems wrong to share. More like an old man that won his young wife to know how he failed the one that came before. Hiking to Tokerville for medical books and supplies, this would be done right. I'm sorry, Cher. I hope you can forgive me. One year later. March 5th. Baby was breech. Would have been a son. Michael. Did my best to turn him. Failed. Must have done a cesarean too late. Had to put Sylvia out. She never woke up. Buried them south in the narrows. Well, this time, I was by their side. So much better. I think I can finally do it. Blow my fucking brains out all over this goddamn cave. Oh, you should not be here. This place, it belongs to the father in the caves. We must not profane it without touch. What are you talking about? Caves, the Holy Father, who gave the Saros his succor and gave the new Canaanites his son. Many of the caves around the valley are sacred to him, and those who would trespass are punished by holy wrath. The father in the caves is just a man who lived a long you time speak ago. speak as one who has not heard the tales, who has not seen the sacred images. If you knew, you would not mock. Year 2108. August 22nd. Ten sets of tracks half a mile northeast of the canyon entrance. Barefoot. August 23rd. Saw them through the scope. Corpses walking around. Finally gone crazy. Dementia, maybe. August 24th. I'm not crazy. They're real. God damn it, they're real. Rushed me in the moment they saw me, snarling like animals. 
They look like corpses, but don't smell rot. I'll be putting them out of their misery. Doing it for them. Why well, I never could for myself. September 3rd. That's the last of them. All gone. Year 2113. February 5th. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday, you useless old dinosaur. Happy birthday to me. Happy 60th. What do you get a man who has everything? A bottle of whiskey and a 12 gauge slug to the roof of the mouth. Woo. Come now. What do I have to prove to myself that I've lived long enough? I'm a shriveled old man. White beard. Seen enough sunrises and sunsets. Saw the big sunset. Been hanging on through a long night. 36 years now. Ridiculous. I'm not kidding myself into thinking there's anything on the other side of this. Fine. Things weren't so bad before I was born. Sharon Alex. Sylvia and Michael, who could have been. Thoughts of the beloved dead before dying. Goodbye, Zion. February 6th. Fucking didn't do it. Coward as usual. Maybe two balls next year. Ten years later. April 25th. 24 of them. Half boys, half, half girls. Youngest is eight, maybe. Oldest is around 13 to 14. Dirty and scrawny. Been on foot a long time. Children's Crusade. Struck camp on nearly the same spot as the Lost Mexicanos. 30 years and a lifetime ago. I spent two nights listening to them. English. Literate. One of them reads stories, but the little ones fall asleep. They escaped some place they called a school, but can't figure out what that was. When they want a the little one to behave, they tell them to stop or the principal will get you. Principal better not show up, or I'll blow his goddamn head off. I can still shoot straight. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the red game. Let's say hello. The survivalist Stufflebag and the man himself, Randall Clark. Year 2124. January 2nd. I've been leaving notes for them and gifts. They liked the books, started with stories, and moved on to weapon manuals, medical books, practical stuff. And the notes. Well, it's embarrassing. Almost like those cards people used to give each other. Everything sweet and loving. I tell them to read and learn, and to make the most of their new home. I tell them that I'm giving them Zion as a gift to make up for all the sorrows of their lives so far, and all the sorrows man has visited on man. I tell them to be kind to each other, and modest. I tell them never to hurt each other, but if someone else comes along and tries to hurt them, to strike back with righteous anger. Stuff like that. I send every note to Father. Because, well, just because. January 18th. But I mentioned that I'm dying. Mine's still sharp. Lungs are the problem. It might be cancer. Cough's been getting worse for months. Finally, there's blood in it. Getting harder to visit my old friends. Breath's so short. I've given away most of what I own. They'll find the rest in the caves when they get a little older. I don't want them to find me, though. The father is a broken down old man. A disappointment. It's time. I don't want another birthday. January 23rd. 
It's cold enough that it won't last long on the high mound of next to Red Gate. I think I've got enough breath just left in me to make it. I'll just lie down, stare at the sky. It feels right. I hope they'll do well. I hope no harm comes to them from within or within. Did my best to prepare them for the last few notes. Said something kind about each one of them. What makes them special? Told them the father was pleased by their kind natures and that it would be up to them to handle things on their own from now on. That I'd be silent, but still watching and still caring. I'm lying then. Oh yeah. I lied to you, Cher. And Alex. And Sylvie. I told you I'd be with you forever. But I wouldn't go back and unsaying. Once if I could. What was the point of all? So many failures. But I never forgot your face. Or little nuts. Or, sorry, Sylvie's. They used to say that what happened after a while, but I never did for Maybe the only point of all, of all this living, was to keep those pictures in my head going for as long as I could. It was the only life I could give you. Not a day went by with it. It wasn't choice. A choice to die again and again. Just never did. Body had its own drive. But the little ones will need it. Species will need it. If it's to continue, that blind drive onward. I wish them well. It's been a gift to me. At the end of all, old innocence. Goodbye, Zion. Randall Dean Clark, February 5th, 2053 to January 2124.